name is Simon Tovey and I was one of the lead exterior designers on this car. I was working on this for the last four years and um, it's, it's been a really exciting project, uh, quite a challenging one also, but um, I suppose most of all it's actually been quite liberating. Liberating because we've got a new powertrain and this powertrain enabled us to come up with something completely new, uh, a completely new pr proportion to the car basically. Um, the battery pack sits between the wheels, which uh, then accentuates the, the wheelbase of this car. So we have the, the wheels really move to the corners of this car. And then the motors sit between the wheels. Therefore, we can have very short overhangs, both front and rear. What it also means is that we can also have a very short bonnet. We don't have that engine in there anymore. So why have a big bonnet? So what we did is we moved the A-pillar forward this first accentuates the cabin of the car, but also then gives the car like this uh, vision of a mid-engine sports car. Really exotic, really exciting. And for, for us, the inspiration for this was the CX-75, which was the, the previous uh, mid-engine supercar that we did. So I think you can see a couple of characteristics from that, like these very muscular, shapely haunches. That, um, combining with this very fast a pillar really give the car uh, a sense of movement, make it look like it's really wanting to move, very much like uh, the Jaguar brand has always kind of perceived. Um, let's move around to the front then. If you wanna all come round, so I can just describe a couple of things around here. I think. Um, one of the main things about this car, or one of the main questions that we get about this car is about the grill, and why we have a grill. Uh, I know a number of our competitors uh, doing electric cars don't need a grill, but actually we do. I think Simon explained to you earlier that we do have um, a radiator behind here, so we do have air that goes through here, cooling that radiator for the batteries and for the inverters and the uh, the other electric components, but also some of the air also goes through the grill. Second reason is that because we have such a different proportion to our the rest of the range, everything has this long bonnet and everybody knows this characteristic as a Jaguar, we wanted this car to be instantly recognizable as a Jaguar. So we have the grill so that you instantly recognize it. Um, the other feature that we have um, I'm going to talk about aerodynamics quite a lot tonight. Uh, during, um, during the design process of this car, we uh, had the aero team working with us quite closely because um, aero efficiency uh, in electric car terms equates to um, mileage, almost one to one, so you can equate it. So we wanted this car to have a, a very aggressive uh, target for aerodynamics, which was 0.29, which we achieved through a number of features. One of them being this here, where the air comes through and goes up over the grill and actually comes straight out through the bonnet and up over the, over the roof. So it stays attached and keeps the air very clean. Uh, yeah, clean uh, direction, I suppose. Um, other, other thing on the side here, we have um, side intake where the air goes straight through air curtain into the wheel arch, releases through down the side of the car, again, keeping the airflow uh, to a minimum. Um, we have very slim all LED uh, headlamps, which have a double J graphic, which again points to the XJ uh, within our class of car. Um, so let's go around to the side. As I mentioned before, the CX-75 played a role in the, the haunches of the car, giving this dynamic, kind of shapely, uh, typical Jaguar uh, appearance of the car. But I think one of, one of the things you'll notice about the side is actually quite sheer in comparison to most of the Jaguar cars. We have quite a, a bellied or barrel roll uh, surfacing. This is actually quite sheer, again, for aerodynamics. Um, as well as the deployable handles which disappear when the car is in motion. Uh, one of the features on the side of the car is this black uh, graphic. B 
because we have the battery pack underneath uh, the usual car uh, package, we have quite a deep door section. So this black graphic breaks up that, that uh, height, I suppose, and gives it a bit more length and also accentuates the shape of the car. These sculptural uh, tabs on the side of the car, again, help air flow around the wheels. And another feature, the DLO, again, hints at the XF and um, XE class of cars that we have, which is the uh, hockey stick kind of graphic. Um, if we go around to the rear then, the rear is the favorite part, well, my favorite part of the car. Um, it's quite a square boxy back end compared to a lot of our cars. A lot of our cars have a, quite a tapering rear section, but actually that's not very good for aerodynamics. You need uh, quite a hard, sharp crease or cr sharp edge to the, to the rear to, for the air to basically to flow off all in one, one area so, that, so you don't get any turbulence. And that is why we have um, an active um, diffuser. So the, uh, the floor of this car is very flat and the air comes, run, rushes through underneath and joins with the air coming over the cabin and so that you have as minimal turbulence as possible. Um, a couple of features around the rear is this uh, spoiler, as I was describing earlier uh, to one of the, your colleagues, is that one of the best shapes for um, aerodynamics is actually like the Tesla X or the BMW X6, which is a coupe line and a very high tail. Although we, we uh, appreciate that as a certain look, we wanted the speed of the, of the roof to run through and give this car a bit more, uh, more of a dynamic uh, appearance. So what we worked with the aerodynamics team is that this spoiler is actually more like a wing. So the air actually goes un again underneath and um, comes straight through off the rear edge, rear tail. Um, the rear screen is quite interesting in itself because it has a hydrophobic coating to it so that water doesn't stick to it. And then combining it with the air that rushes through it, it cleans it as it, as, it, as it drives, so you never ha uh, need a wiper. Um, I think that's pretty much for the exterior. If we want to have a look on the interior. Hydrophobic. Snowphobic. <laughs> Snowphobic. So the interior, I suppose that the main story about the interior is, again, based on this A pillar, movement forward means that the driver and the, uh, the forward occupants can move also forward, allowing the rear occupants a lot more space than usual. So what we have is a cabin size of uh, a Jaguar XJ long wheelbase on the footprint of a car the size of a Porsche Macan, which is pretty incredible. Um, the dashboard and the, and the philosophy of the interior is basically to make the most of this interior to make it uh, interior size sorry and to make it feel light and airy so you'll see a lot of things including the center cluster cluster uh, open uh, with air kind of you can see the air and everything running through it and very open and very clean and very simple mm -hmm.